In this chapter, talking about quadratics, we have talked about several ways to solve quadratic equations. Um, my favorite method is to factor. So if we had something like um, x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0, that we would just factor it into this, set both of those equal to 0, and those would be our solutions. Unfortunately, not every equation can factor. So that doesn't always work. Now, another really nice method is like x squared minus, uh, no, let's say, yeah, let's do minus 36 equals 0. Okay, if you only have an x squared, then you can just use square roots. So we move that over, we take the square root of both sides, and we get plus or minus 6. Also great, it's just that's a pretty specialized method, like that method doesn't work on this problem. Now, a method that does always work is completing the square. And we did those uh, earlier. The problem with completing the square is it's just so many darn steps. Nobody really likes it. So the fourth and the last way that we're going to learn is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula works every time with every type of quadratic equation. So it is more work than factoring. So whenever I get the chance, I always still factor. But, uh, well, and if I get the chance to just take the square roots, I would definitely do that. Um, but the quadratic formula is so much better than completing the square. So for the quadratic formula, uh, if you have an equation in standard form, this is the quadratic formula. Yes, you do need to memorize it, okay? So every time you do a quadratic formula problem, just write it down. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so we are going to use this to solve all of these equations. Um, something that you may want to do just to get started is label a, b, and c. So a is 3, b is negative 4, and c is negative 9. So to use a quadratic equation, you're going to go like this. x equals negative b, so that's the opposite of what b is. So 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Okay, we need to clean this up. So we're going to do 4 plus or minus. Don't put the square root in, but everything under the square root, go straight to your calculator and put it in exactly how you see it especially right here. Make sure this negative 4 is in parentheses, otherwise your calculator is going to tell you wrong things. Okay, don't miss any of your negatives. Um, and when you do that, I think you get 124 all over 6. Okay, that is great. That's a wonderful, wonderful answer. Um, we're not done. Now, the square root of 124, that's not a perfect square, um, but we can simplify it. Uh, let's do a factor tree. 124 is 2 and 62, um, which is 2 and 31. So we can bring out a 2. So we have 4 plus or minus 2. The 31 stays in. All over 6. And then if you can factor something out, you should. So we'll factor out a 2. We get 2 plus or minus root 31 over 6, and only after you have factored out can you reduce that 2, 6 on the outside. So our answer is 2 plus or minus root 31 over 30. Okay. All right, let's try the next one. We have A is 1, B is negative 9, and C is 27. So X equals negative B, so that's negative, negative 9, plus or minus b squared, so negative 9 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 27, all over 2 times 1. Okay, 9 plus or minus. Don't put the square root in your calculator, but everything that's under the square root goes straight to your calculator. So you're going to do negative 9 squared, don't forget the parentheses, minus 4 times 1 times 27, and we get negative 27, I believe. Or two. All right, we are going to keep going. 
So we get 9 plus or minus um, 27. We can do a factor tree on that. That's 3 and 9 and 3 and 3. So we can pull out a 3. We're going to leave a 3 inside. Oh, also, did you notice this is the square root of a negative? So the square root of that negative 1 is going to be i over 2. Now, you could factor a 3 out of the top, but it's not going to cancel with anything because you have a 2 on the bottom. So this is just going to be your answer. Just leave it that way. That's fine. So notice um, the first one, we had uh, an answer. It was a real number, but it's irrational. The second one, we had an imaginary answer, which is kind of fun. All right, let's check out number 3. Okay, so negative B. Um, so there's A, B, and C. So negative, negative 7 is going to be positive 7 plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, don't put the square root in your calculator, but put everything under the square root in your calculator. So negative 7 squared with the parentheses minus 4 times 6 times negative 20 we get 529 or 12. Uh, you know what? I think 529 is a perfect square. Go ahead and take the square root of it. Um, it is 23. So these are going to be nice, neat answers. You have two answers here. One of them is 7 plus 23 divided by 12. The other one is 7 minus 23 divided by 12. So that's going to be 30 divided by 12, which is going to be 5 over 2. And this one's going to be negative 16 over 12, which is going to reduce to negative 4 thirds. So those actually gave you two nice, neat answers, rational numbers, actually. All right, last one of these. We've got A, B, and C. Okay x equals negative b, so negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 15, all over 2 times 6. All right, don't put the square root in your calculator, but everything under the square root, put that into the calculator. 1 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 15. And maybe we get 361 over 12. I'm thinking that 361 is a perfect square. Pretty sure it is. Go ahead and put that in your calculator. So negative 1 plus, oh, that was supposed to be a plus. Sorry. Negative 1 plus or minus 19 over 12. So there's two answers here. One of them is negative 1 plus 19, so that's going to be 18 twelfths, otherwise known as 3 halves. And this one's going to be negative 1 minus 19, so negative 20 over 12, which is going to reduce to negative 5 thirds.